is the third bucktail streamer fly that I'm doing in a series of bucktail streamers. This is also included in the class that I uh, just taught yesterday, as a matter of fact. I do have some other classes that are coming up. You can find a link down in the description down below um, to uh, find out about those classes. But I did a series and still have am working on a series of bucktail streamer flies. I have one more coming up next week, but this is the third in the series, and this is called the Ambrose Bucktail. This is specifically tied as a bass fly, and I wanted to include a bass fly in this series of bucktail streamers. Often your streamer flies and uh, bucktail or hair wing streamers, things like that, are uh, focusing on trout or even like landlocked salmon, things like that. Uh, but there's a number of real good patterns, whether they're bucktail or hair wings, flies that were actually tied intended for large and smallmouth bass. So I wanted to include one in this class, um, and this is it. This is the Ambrose bucktail. It's a fun fly to tie. There's not much to it. Um, it has standard parts of a lot of streamers, the tag, body, rib, tail, uh, collar, and, and wing. Um, but it, it is a lot of fun to tie, um, and I look forward to fishing some of these this fall when the streamer bite starts to kick off. So the Ambrose Bucktail, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll start the Ambrose Bucktail by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3366 hook, it's just a, a large um, some not a stinger hook but it's a bass hook is what I call it. It has a wider gap to it and um, a little bit shorter shank for um, a hook that has such a wide gap. You could use say a TMCO 8089 or something like that. Um, uh, there's different hooks that are used but this one works for me. This is a size 2 by the way. Being a bass fly you're going to want a little bit stouter hook um, that is uh, a little bit heavier. So after we uh, debarb the hook, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm just using a Danville. This is a 6 aught in red. Um, and I'm going to attach that right at the point of the hook, working back just a little bit along the hook shank. First thing we're going to tie in is our tag. Our tag is made of uh, Danville oval gold tinsel. This is in a size 10, which is about the largest that they have for this large of a hook. I'm going to attach the oval tinsel on the underside of the hook shank. And I'm going to advance my thread along the hook shank and over the tinsel down into the bend of the hook. And when I stop, I'm going to be pretty much right at the bottom of the bend of the hook right here. And that's just to give me a place for my tag to start and then come back up and then the body will start right here at, towards the end of the shank. I'll wrap my thread back up in a position to tie off the tinsel, uh, the tag. I don't need a, a long tag. You could even shorten that up a little bit if you want. To facil facilitate tying this in, um, wrapping this tag in and not having to work around the bobbin all the time, I'm going to turn the fly over and now I'm going to wrap in my oval tinsel for my tag. I want to make certain that each wrap is just right in front of the previous one so I'm covering up any thread there. Work your way on up to your thread. Take a look around. I've got everything covered up nicely. Once I get to my thread, I'll just tie that off. Notice how the back of that tag is just right at the top of the bend, right here, but not up onto the hook shank. That way when I'm tying in the tail, the tail will go straight off across the top of it because this tinsel is so uh, wide in diameter, if I rode this all the way up to the hook shank, when I tie in that tail, it's going to hit that and then want to stick up at an angle as opposed to going straight out. Once we have our tag 
tied in here. Our next step in this, the Ambrose bucktail is to tie in the tail. Tail is made up of white bucktail and red bucktail. So we're gonna, the red's gonna go on top of the white. So we're gonna cut out some bucktail and stack it. Don't worry if the tips aren't just exactly, you know, nice and crisp and clean. Um, that's okay. But keep in mind that each piece, I should say each section of bucktail, the white and the red, is going to be somewhat sparse because put together they're going to make up the tail. We're going to tie these in. I want to measure these a hook shank, um, I mean a hook length, so right there to the bend to the front of the hook. I'm going to tie that right on top. I do want to try and keep these from um, the red and the white from blending together. I want them to stay um, somewhat separate. Plus, when I tie this in, I am going to use some of the bucktail as an underbody in here, but I don't want it to get real fat. So I'm gonna cut these at an angle and the white is gonna get cut back to about halfway up the hook shank, the red will be cut back a little bit further so it gives me a smoother body or at least a taper down here so that um, my body doesn't get too too big and too thick. The red is also cut out and stacked. You want to remember keep that fairly sparse because it's the other half of the tail. It's tied up right on top here. I'm going to wrap those back down to the back here where the body will begin. And then I'm going to cut these also at a shallow angle so that they end up just right up here in the head space of the fly. Next we're going to tie in our rib. The rib on this is uh, more oval gold tinsel. I'm going to tie this in so it sits right on the underside of the body. And then I'm going to tie in the body material, which is a medium rayon chenille. If you've got a nylon chenille, that's fine. Uh, or if you prefer some other kind of chenille, this is just a yellow rayon chenille. You could dub the body if you wanted to um, instead if you don't have any chenille. It just needs to be yellow. I'm going to tie that in and anchor it down at the back. And now I'm going to put touching turns up the hook shank, binding all of this in. And I'm not really that concerned about covering it up with the thread as much as making certain it's all bound down to the hook, um, nice and secured so that I have a smooth underbody, that's all. So if you have some gaps in your thread wraps, that's fine. It's going to get covered up by this chenille. But this just brings it all down to the hook shank, gives me a nice smooth underbody for my chenille to wrap onto. Once I have that lash down, I'm just going to go right up to the eye of the hook and then back down about two eye lengths one and a half if, if you're comfortable, but two eye lengths is pretty good because we have the body to be tied in and a rib. We have two hackles to be palmered and then we have two clumps of bucktail to make our wing. If I am too close up here, I can easily crowd the eye of the hook. With all of that secured in, I'm going to wrap the body on and just going to put the chenille starts right back at the very back end. I'm going to put nice touching turns of chenille in here just to give me a nice full body. When you come to your thread, you're just going to wrap that thread in right here. Notice I, I, the tendency I think a lot of people have is to get one more wrap in and now you're starting to, to shorten up your space for your head. So when you get to the thread, just stop right there where your thread's hanging and tie that in. Few wraps to secure that and we can cut away the excess. 
Now we'll wrap our rib in. Uh, I just want five evenly spaced wraps. Third wrap should usually come right around at the middle of the body. Sixth wrap usually comes right up to where your thread is at. This fly as well as if you want to add a little bit of weight to this fly, you could put some thread wrap or thread wraps. You could put some lead wraps along the hook shank in here um, to add a little bit of weight to this fly to help get it down. I'm just going to tidy this up just a little bit so that I have a nice platform for putting in our collars as well as the wing. So once we have the body complete, we're ready to put in our collar and then our wing, and then the fly is done. The collar is made up of two hackles. There is a black hackle on top of a red hackle. I'm going to use, these are just a, a rooster saddle hackles. You could use um, something a little stiffer if you want, uh, or you could use something that has, it's a little softer, flows a little bit better, like a schloppen hackle if that's what you have. I don't need the short fibers right up in here, so I'm actually going to start this, because I'm only going to be putting in about three wraps of each of the, the hackles. I want the longer fibers right up in here. So I'm going to start this right about the middle, and I'm going to separate that. I'm going to cut the top of the hackle off just right like this. That gives me a nice little handle to tie that in. I'm going to tie that in with the uh, shiny side down. I'm going to anchor that in real well, right up against the body of the chenille. Again, I'm only putting in about three wraps of this hackle, so because uh, I don't uh, remember both the the red and the black comprise the entire collar. What we're looking for is just a little bit of contrasting colors here. So I'll get three. If you don't think that's quite full enough, you could actually put in four if you wanted to, but be careful not to overdo it. Also be careful that you're not, not wrapping too far forward um, because we do have a bucktail wing to put in here. So we don't want to um, fill that space up with just with our collar. Black hackles, uh, kind of the same thing. I, I want the longer fiber, so I'm going to start this right about the middle. I'm going to cut the feather off, leaving just a little bit of a triangle right here for a handle to tie that in, secure that in real well. I'm actually leaving my thread up here against the hackle where I'm tying that, tied that in instead of moving it down the head. And the reason is, as I bring the hackle around, the thread will actually add a little bit of pressure to push the hackle um, up against the previous wrap. Nice little trick to just kind of keep from these wraps getting too separated and then spreading out too far forward. I'm going to secure the black hackle, cut away the excess, and then wrap this down. And here, I'm just tidying this up a little bit and I'm covering up all these butt ends. And that is just to, to, so that I have a smooth platform for tying in my wing. Wing is going to be made up of 
white bucktail and some light brown bucktail. I'm going to use the actual brown hair from the back side of the bucktail. I did a video a couple weeks ago on a fly called the Pink Pup. If you haven't seen that, there will be a link right up there. Uh, you can go check that out where it uses the same light brown. Uh, and I explain why it is that um, I prefer to use the, the light brown that's on the back of the, the bucktail. Again, we want, we don't want our wing to get to be too large in terms of bulk. So remember, I have two different colors of bucktail, so I have to keep each one fairly sparse when I'm uh, stacking those. And also, if they're not stacked perfectly even, it isn't a big deal. I want the tail, uh, the wing to come back almost to the, as long as the tail. I'm going to anchor that right to the top of the head space here. Make certain that that is right up on top. I'm going to trim away the excess, keeping that a little bit of a slope. Trying to keep this head from getting too unwielding. And then I'm ready for the brown bucktail. You want to keep this fairly sparse. Uh, you'll have a lot of little short hairs in there you can take out, clean that up a little bit. Same thing, it's going to go right up on top, same length. Wrap that in. Get that haggle out of there. See, uh, caught something there. Put in just a handful of wraps to make certain that that is secured and it stays right up on top. I want to make certain that it's not creeping around the sides. Again, this is supposed to be a bait fish pattern, so we want to keep some of those colors kind of distinct as well as the profile. Once that's done, we're just going to build up the head of the fly. I'll start down at the eye of the hook, working my way backwards, covering up all those butt ends and smoothing all of this out. You could flatten your thread out if you want to. Um, I don't find it's necessary. I like to put some hardest hull on these to dress up the heads just a little bit so they're kind of shiny. Um, Then inspect the head, make certain you don't have any um, uncovered material or anything so it's all nice and uniform. And then we can go ahead and flatten the thread here to uh, make the head of the fly. I'm just going to put in a seven or eight turn whip finish. Right here, working my way down to the eye of the hook. And then I can cut my thread. I'm going to go ahead and put some fly tight on here to uh, soak in and seal up everything. That'll soak down in there and seal up all that thread wraps as well as it'll get down into some of the bucktail and secure that in there. Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and put some hardest hull on that and we can start to finish the head out and our Ambrose bucktail will be done. fly tights all dried on all of that thread and down inside so we're ready to go ahead you don't have to do this step as a matter of fact most bass bucktail bass flies that I've seen or even streamer bass flies uh, traditionally they don't do this people like to do it for the trout flies but I'm not certain why the bass but I do I just I think it having that gloss on there uh, kind of brightens up the head a little bit makes it a little bit more of a target um, and it's just it doesn't take much more to do this step So I'm just going to take some uh, Hardest hull is what I'm using. I don't like to use uh, 
clear nail polish. Some people do because the clear nail polish sometimes will discolor. It will also sometimes dissolve different dyes. Uh, so it can affect the overall uh, color and tint of the head. I just would rather have that those thread wraps show right through. And I'm going to go ahead and put um, a coating over everything. It will take usually three to four coats of hardest hull. This will cure and when it does it shrinks down in and around all of those thread wraps even though it looks like it's all nice and smooth and glossy right now in a little bit those thread wraps will be kind of showing through. But after three or four coats uh, it will look just like it does right now. Nice and glossy and it kind of makes that the, um, like I said, it makes the, the thread underneath pop a little bit more. So anyway, that's the Ambrose Bucktail. Fun fly. Uh, I wanted to include a bass fly in this streamer class and not just do all trout flies. Trout flies are fun and everything, but um, bass are fish too. And uh, this was a fun fly to tie. I like the way it's put together. Uh, it doesn't take long to tie this fly. You could have half a dozen of these done pretty quick. And hopefully you'll tie some up. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.